Hello fellow psychonauts, this is Interbeing Art, and in this video I'm going to give you a basic guide of the most commonly known methods of administering salvia divinorum. As a disclaimer, salvia divinorum does come with some risks. Though salvia divinorum is completely physically safe and non-addictive, it does not cause any toxicity, nor does it harm any of uh, the brain or any organs vital functions. The risk of salvia divinorum is mainly in the psychological effects. Salvia divinorum also has a disassociative effect which can cause people to move around after taking it. Uh, so a trip sitter is often required. The purpose of this video is not necessarily to advocate for the use of salvia divinorum because it certainly isn't for everyone. And more research into this substance is required in order to try to figure out if this drug is for you. The purpose of this video is to promote the safe use of this substance for those who have chosen to use it. So salvia divinorum is a mint plant from Oaxaca, Mexico, traditionally used by the Mazatec for its visionary and medicinal value. Though salvia is considered a psychedelic, which I'm not arguing it isn't, I do have to warn that it is not like any other psychedelics. Most psychedelics are serotonergic, meaning they work in the serotonin receptors, whereas salvia, the main chemical of which is salvinorin A, works through the kappa opioid receptors. It is a completely different system. Salvinorin A is absorbed through the lungs, or absorbed through the salivary glands. Preparation is absolutely necessary before administering a salvinorin A. I have listed three rules uh, to help prepare you for the salvia divinorum experience. Rule number one is do as much research as possible, more than just this video. You need to know what the chemical is, what the history of it is, how it affects people, read different trip reports of how each method affects people because each method affects people differently and you want to know if this substance is the right experience for you to try. Rule number two is set your intentions. Are you doing salvia for therapeutic reasons or are you doing salvia for exploratory reasons? But the intention should never be for fun or just for a laugh. Um, there are other drugs that are much better for this if you want to have fun or just go for a laugh. Uh, salvia is just not the drug to do that with. If you would like some reasons to know why anybody would want to try salvia or maybe why you might want to try salvia, please stay tuned for the second part of this video where I will describe a little bit more of salvia's effects and also why somebody might want to try it. And finally, rule number three is set and setting. You need to be in a, a good mindset and you have to have your place that you're planning on doing it all set up. For your set, you wanna be in a stable mood, you want to be have full conscious intention and you have to be mentally prepared for having a, this type of experience. As for setting, you want to be in, a, in the safest setting as possible, preferably inside, but I mean, you could possibly do it like camping in a tent or something like that. Just make sure there's nothing around you that you can hurt yourself on and you'll probably want to have a sitter. Make sure you have everything you need. You need to be very comfortable. Make sure that there's nothing irritating your skin or uh, nothing that's going to potentially harm you during this experience. Method one, smoking. When smoking salvia divinorum, you can choose to smoke the dry leaf or the extracts. Salvia extracts are basically the dried leaf but has um, the potency of the salvinorin A is increased. So if you're getting 5x, you're getting five times as much as salvinorin A as the dry leaf. If you go up to 20x, you're getting 20 times as much salvinorin A as the regular dry leaf and so on. Dry leaf most of the time is not sufficient to be able to give people the effects that they're looking for. However, I still recommend that you start off at dry leaf or uh, the lowest possible. When it hits hard, 
it can give you amnesia, it can be very dysphoric, uh, very uncomfortable. So you want to be prepared for that and it's when it comes to salvia divinorum, it's probably better to ease into it. When absorbing salvinorin A into your lungs, the effects come on very rapidly, within 30 seconds. The chemicals rush and flood your brain very quickly and also dissipate very quickly. So when smoking the extracts, you're looking to, for about like a five to 20 minute experience typically. So the best method of smoking salvia divinorum is either through a bong or a pipe. My preferred method is to smoke it in a bong with cold water and you will want to have a sitter for this experience because again, since it comes on so fast, you may end up breaking through into that visionary experience before you even finish the hit. It's that quick. So you'll want to make sure somebody takes the bong away from you so you don't break it, pour it all over yourself, burn something. You can use just a regular butane lighter. It doesn't need to be a torch. It's sometimes good to mix the salvinorin A in the bowl uh, with some other substance such as a uh, blue lotus leaf, some, like a, a smokable substance that doesn't have strong psychological effects. I have to warn that mixing salvinorin A with cannabis does change the effects and can also lead people to experience salvia type effects later on in life when they choose to smoke cannabis, especially if you don't smoke cannabis all the time and you know you don't want to ruin cannabis for you. <laughs> Unfortunately it's really hard to accurately dose yourself when it comes to salvia so that's why I really advocate that you start off low and build up into it. Kind of find where your threshold is and then you know play within that field because if you think that you can just start on something like 50x you may be very sorry you did because everybody has a different sensitivity to salvia. For me 20x gets me really good. For other people, all it takes is 5x. So that's why you will really want to start off low so you don't overpower yourself and have a traumatic first time experience. If you're on a budget and you can't afford getting uh, a gram of dry leaf and 5x and 10x and 20x in order to build yourself up, then I'd recommend just getting one gram of five or 10X and one gram of 20 or 30X. So that way you can kind of play around with it. Start off with just a few flakes and kind of build yourself up. Just, you know, be careful. And it's really not best to just like dive right in. Diving in is not really recommended when it comes to salvia. Also, it's commonly recommended that you hold the salvia smoke in your lungs for as long as possible, around 20 or 30 seconds in order to maximize the effects. However, there is no real research to confirm that this is factually true, so... Method 2, Vaporization. This method is to be approached with extreme caution. In order to do this, you would need to have a scale capable of weighing in the millionths of a gram. An effective dose of pure salvinorin A is 200 micrograms. Hey, so I was editing and I realized I left out a crucial detail here that even though uh, salvinorin A is active at 100 to 200 micrograms, a lot of that salvinorin A is lost through the smoke, the flame, uh, on its way to the lungs and even on its way to the brain. So really, you usually only get 5% of the salvinorin A that you vaporize. So you'll want to vaporize around one milligram for the effective dose. The ideal temperature to vaporize salvinorin A is at 277 degrees Celsius, which is 530 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a lot hotter than most vaporizers go, so you might have to get a custom rig. So this method is not really recommended unless you're very serious about your salvia exploration and again, you have a very accurate scale and very accurate rig. Method three, quitting. Quitting is the recommended method for the Mazatec. That is because using the quid method for salvia provides a more gradual, a more long lasting, and comparably to the smoking extracts, a much more gentle experience. The way you do the quid method for salvia is by taking anywhere from 15 to 30 leaves, usually recommended around 20. Uh, you remove the mid vein and pile the leaves up and then you roll it 
tight. Uh, may, you might even want like a little bit of a, a tie, some string that won't dissolve in your mouth. And what you want to do is put that quid and squeeze it in your jaw. You want to get all the bitter, gross juices coating underneath your tongue and around your gums. Let all these juices coat the inside of your mouth for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. You can drink water afterwards, however to maximize the effects you really want to leave those bitter juices sitting there. After 15 to 20 minutes of gently squeezing the quid in your mouth, You'll want to put it in a bowl or a trash can, something that you won't knock over when you're uh, tripping. And then you just lay back on your bed or in a place where you're not going to knock anything over and close your eyes and just, just wait. The effects should come on fairly quickly after taking the quid out of your mouth, anywhere from a couple to 10 minutes. You may also use dry leaves when using the quid method. However, because dry leaves tend to crumble in your mouth, you can leave your dry leaves in a bowl of cold water anywhere from five to 10 minutes in order to get some moisture back in the leaves. However, just keep in mind that this will decrease the potency. Method four, tincture. Salvia tinctures are commonly sold on salvia websites. However, they are often met with poor reviews. This is because the salvia tinctures are made from ethyl alcohol, which can cause blistering in your mouth and it, it, it's very uncomfortable. Though they recommend you dilute the tincture with uh, a little bit of warm water, it still has a tendency to blister your mouth. When using the tincture method, you'll want an equal ratio between hot water and tincture. So you want to measure the tincture dose probably in a shot glass and put an equal amount of hot water, but not too hot that you'll burn your mouth. You'll want to hold the tincture underneath your tongue until you start feeling the effects or up to a half an hour. Then you can spit it out or you can swallow it if you wish. Although the alcohol and the tincture is just a solvent and it's not enough to get you drunk. So really that's not a... <laughs> effects from the salvia tincture does last longer than the other methods. However, it is substantially weaker. You can expect slightly altered perceptual effects. And if you're lucky, you can get some pretty wicked lucid dreams. Method five, salvia tea. Salvia tea can be made from three to four dried grams of leaf, boiling them for five minutes and simmering for about 15 minutes. Again, salvia is not orally active. In other words, the salvinorin A will not be absorbed by your stomach. So when drinking your salvia tea, you'll want to swish each sip around your mouth for around 15 to 20 seconds. And this does seem like a very nice way to experience trance-like effects and also um, lucid dreaming. The final method of taking salvia that I'll be discussing in this video is microdosing. Something very interesting that Peter Addy, uh, the world leading salvia researcher, uh, talked about in one of his lectures was this uh, psychiatrist or pharmacologist, I'm not sure, in Australia who attempted to use microdosing to cure depression. So microdosing salvia could be uh, an alternative method worth looking into over the, the typical antidepressants like SNRIs and SSRIs, etc. Uh, that are commonly given out by doctors. So though microdosing salvia does seem to have psychological benefits, you'll have to do so at your own risk because of how little data there is. You'll want to consider things such as if you have an atypical brain structure or if you're on any other medication. 
My two main sources for this video were from psychonautwiki.org and sagewisdom.org. So please, for your sake, my sake, and the entire psychedelic community's sake, please take caution when taking Salvia Divinorum. And I wish you all the best on your Salvia adventures. Special thanks to my patrons, Nova Kane, Martin Richards, and Connor Graves. And extra special thanks to my patron, Rainbow Droid. Without you, I would not be able to make these videos, so blessed be. <laughs> Please consider donating to my PayPal or becoming a patron on my Patreon. I'll leave the links in the description. Please stay tuned for part two of this video where I'll go into more detail on the effects of Salvia as well as the reasons behind why you might want to try Salvia in the first place. I'd also like to thank the YouTuber Adventures Through the Mind for mentioning me in his podcast with uh, Salvia researcher Christopher Solomon. Christopher Solomon is the inventor of the Salvia pipe, which is an excellent tool to ease into the Salvia experience when you're smoking the extracts. Thank you all very much for watching and safe travels. Thank you.